Hey guys, Nicole here with Obscure Reptiles and Caging, and today we're going to be talking about Rexpo 2022. So let's get started. Hey everyone, uh, I'm just sitting here today with Mango, our banana pied female from last year. We just got back from vending Rexpo a couple of days ago, so I'm going to show you guys some footage of that and talk to you guys a little bit about reptile shows, whether you've been to them or not. Um, a couple like hints and tips, especially for people who are looking to purchase things or for example, if you are going to vend them or thinking of vending them in the future. Uh, we're just going to show you guys some cool footage and talk a little bit about it. Um, so I'm going to show you guys first our table. Um, it was an awesome, awesome show. Um, I want to say thanks to Pat and Matt, the guys who run the show. It's actually the only one that we attend and event at. Um, it's a great show. It's really large. They have a Facebook page, a website for you guys who are local to New York. Definitely check it out, even if you're in Pennsylvania, stuff like that. Um, it's a really awesome show with a lot of different things to look at. You could spend a whole day there. You know, they have food, stuff like that. But and it's only like 10 bucks at the door to get in. Um, but the first thing I'm gonna recommend is if you are coming, make sure you get there early. Um, any reptile show you go to, you wanna make sure uh, you have good parking and you wanna make sure that you're able to get in the door. Sometimes these shows are so packed, uh, it's kinda hard to get in, to walk around, to see all the tables. So make sure you're gonna get there early. And if the shows offer an early pass, for example, Rexpo does, highly, highly recommend getting that. By getting in early, you get the best deals on the animals. You get the time to walk around freely without, you know, a huge crowd. Um, it's not that much more expensive. Uh, you get in early, which means you get better parking, um, especially if you're there looking like, let's say you're looking for a female banana pie. What if only one breeder has it and you don't get there till it opens and then there's a huge rush of people, you might miss out. If you're going to attend a reptile show, I highly, highly recommend getting those early passes. Not only do I say go early, I also say stay late, stay the whole time. You've already paid for it, um, just make sure you've got a clear day uh, because you could get really good deals, not only if you get there early, but if you stay late. So if it's the last 30 minutes of a show and a, you know a vendor wants to sell something or doesn't want to go home with it, you know, um, and you offer a little bit less or you say, hey, look, how, what's the lowest you'll go and I'll take it home right now? You might be able to haggle a little bit more. Some breeders don't, and that's totally okay. You could, you have to respect, you know, if, if somebody wants a certain price for an animal, you have to realize they put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into making that animal. Uh, but some breeders, like generally, I have animals that I know I'm willing to w wiggle with, and then I have others that know, unfortunately, sorry, the price is what the price is, and, you know, and that's my right, which is totally okay and perfectly fine. At this last show, I'm sure we upset a few people. Um, unless somebody's interested in purchasing an animal, we normally don't take them out of the cage or display setup. Um, that is for our animal safety. Um, we've had a few times in the past where somebody was like, yeah, I want to hold the, you know, XYZ. So we hand it to them to hold and then they go to hand it to their two-year-old who squeezes, almost drops, um, bends the animal. Um, I don't I don't mind if people hold if they are seriously inquiring about purchasing, but a lot of people like to stop at tables just to hold different snakes, which is totally fine. Um, we're going to actually, we're considering starting to bring a animal that is not for sale, that's just to be held um, for people who want that experience of holding their first snake. Um, unfortunately, a lot of our animals are a lot higher end also, so if one of those, you know, got injured, damaged, or, you know, worse, that, you know, that would put us in a very bad situation. Um, and on top of that, we don't know what other animals you've held. Some shows have wild caught animals, which could have mites. They could have a whole bunch of different things. So by going and, you know, touching that animal, and then coming over to my table and wanting to touch my animal, then going to the next table, you could, you know, invertedly be transferring parasites and stuff to my animals unintentionally. So generally, I don't let people hold stuff unless they're interested in purchasing, which I, I could tell by the people's faces made them a little bit upset when they came to our show. But we are in the works of getting an animal that's friendly like Mango, uh, one that's got like a cool pattern so people will be happy being able to hold it. And um, that animal will be just for display purposes for people to be able to get that, you know, snake experience that they're looking for and, you know, keeping all of our other animals safe and uh, this one that we, you know, will be bringing just for display purposes will be quarantined 
permanently somewhere other than our reptile room. Especially if it's your first reptile show, don't get too upset if somebody says no. There are normally educational tables at shows that will let you hold things and get close up and personal to them. On that same topic, uh, when you go to different tables, let's say you're looking uh, into purchasing something, you are allowed to ask if that animal is captive, bred, or wild caught. Uh, a lot of websites, like if you go to Rexpo, it has a little CB or WC right next to their logo, logos so you know what that animal is. Not saying anything against wild caught other than, you know, if you don't know it's wild caught, that, you know, could be an issue along the, down the line for you. You don't know what's going on. Maybe it has parasites it needs to go to the vet. Um, but it's okay to ask that kind of stuff. I also recommend if you even think you might purchase from that person in the future, just get one of their cards. Um, and when you get the card, take a picture of the card and then in the background their table. I can't tell you how many times after a reptile show you see people, oh, who was the ball python breeder on the left side? Or, you know, who had the king snakes somewhere in the middle? Um, I bought a dragon from, I don't know, does anyone know who brought dragons? Uh, so definitely, whether you are or you are not buying, but you just think you might, Take a picture, normally they almost always have little cards you could take. Take a picture of the card with the table in the background. Not only does that tell you who they are with all their information, but it kind of gives you a visual of, okay, this breeder went with this card. Some people just walk around grabbing every single card, but they don't know what card that table went with. So that's just a little trick for you guys. If you are buying an animal, make sure you ask every single question that you can think of about that animal. Um, a good breeder will answer your questions. Um, if you're just like asking questions and not interested in buying, sometimes people could be a little bit short. Um, or if they're in the middle of making a deal with somebody else, somebody else is already purchasing something, just sit, you know, just stand back and give them a minute and then uh, good breeders will answer your questions. Um, one guy I spent almost an hour with at the show and he was interested in buying, even though it was just a very cheap snake, he wanted to know the proper care, set up all that kind of stuff. So you have to be able to take the time to answer those questions and if you are at a show understand that you know if you want to purchase an animal but they're talking to somebody else they're going to get to you sometimes it's a little overwhelming being a vendor when you've got like six people at the table and then now all of them want to hold one of your snakes because they're all interested in purchasing normally I'll have a rule is if one snakes already out somebody has to wait you know to be able to get the next one some people don't like wanting to wait that extra two minutes but it gets a little confusing being a vendor especially if you're the only one at a table and now six different people have your animals and you can't pay attention to everybody that's how things can get stolen that's how things can get you know hurt or drop because you know you're not paying attention um, and things can get mixed up especially if you have different snakes that have different heads uh, so just kind of so one if you're a vendor make sure you bring a friend if you're going to be purchasing also let's say you go up to my table and I have, you know, let's say this banana pie for sale, um, you can just say, hold on one second, uh, do you have Instagram, Facebook, you know, do you have a YouTube? You can ask questions like that or even just grab their cards. Normally it has that information on their cards. Take a step back, do five minutes of research just to see if they have reviews on Morph Market, to see, you know, if they've posted YouTube videos and it kind of shows the setups that these animals have. Um, doing just a few minutes extra. I know people get really excited. They find a snake that they want. Um, a lot of breeders will also like hold it for you. So I had a few guys, I had a few people who were like, "Yeah, I really want to purchase this, um, but I, you know, I just need ten extra minutes to decide. Can you hold it for ten minutes?" So I'll be like, "Yeah, uh, I can hold it for ten minutes." Uh, you know, I'm not saying I'm gonna hold it for like six hours while you go and haggle with everyone else to get a cheaper price, but you know, if somebody wants like ten extra minutes to do some research to. Um, just give, look around, make sure there's nothing else that they've been looking for, then yeah, 10 minutes, you know, being held is no big deal. Definitely make sure if you're going to be vending to bring one or two people with you. Generally, they'll at least let you bring two people per table. It makes it a lot easier that way. If you want to walk around and see other people, see other things that you can, or, you know, if you just want to go stretch your legs, stuff like that, um, make sure you don't go by yourself because then it's a pain in the butt. But we had a great time meeting everyone. Thank you everyone who stopped at our table. Thank you for everyone who purchased from us. Um, but that's it. I'm going to show you guys a little bit more footage in here just of the show, of the cool animals that we got to see. Um, but that's it for this video. If you guys have any questions, you can put them in the comments below. If you haven't already, please subscribe. We do new videos every other Wednesday. And I'll see you guys on Wednesday. <laughs> Beautiful. She's awesome. She really what is. What is he? She's a giant bird snake. Giant bird snake.